Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. A wonderful evening, brethren, in the name of the Lord. This is Pastor Paul and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study here at Richmond Hill Apostolic Church. Praise God. Uh, I welcome all of you in the name of Jesus to our Bible study. I would like to thank our host pastor for giving me this uh, privilege to share with you tonight the word of the Lord. Amen. And um, without further ado, let me direct your attention to the word of God. Amen. Here, here in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We will be reading beginning from verse 4. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And lastly, verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace shall be with you amen so tonight um we will be studying about this topic entitled keeping your hearts and minds through christ jesus keeping your hearts and minds through christ jesus amen let us pray Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, that um, tonight you have given us again this um, privilege to study your word. And we come to you humbly, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. And you cleanse our hearts and minds so that we will be prepared to receive your word tonight. We pray that you give us um, guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Um, is your servant as your mouthpiece tonight. And um, everyone who will be listening, we pray that you bless everyone by your word as we study your word tonight. Amen. This is our prayer. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So keeping your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, as we all know, brethren, uh, today, nowadays, I mean, mental health is such a big thing. It, it's such a big word during our times, especially, especially during these times of crisis, uh, pandemic. Mental health is such a big issue nowadays because um, because of this pandemic, because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it resulted to crisis, not just uh, not just in health, not just health crisis, but it resulted to many to to to, to different kinds or many or crisis in different aspects in our lives. So we have also the financial crisis and um, especially just like here in the Philippines we have some quarantine and lockdowns going on so people were, were not able to go out to socialize and um, do their normal the normal things that they used to do and because of that because of the crisis because of the, the situation um, Many people tend to be depressed and to be anxious. And according to some data, I, I have read from uh, from an article online, it was said there that uh, this COVID-19 um, pandemic may have increased or tripled, even tripled 
the the depression rate. So depression rate since COVID-19 has tripled. So many people are depressed, many people get uh, anxious and um, stressed because of this crisis because um, because it's 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 it is indeed a challenging and a hard times right now. So we all have to face this to, to face this um, this issue, this crisis. And because of that, we we must not only take care of our physical um, fitness, not just um, our body to be fit. We need to take care not only of our bodies, but also we need to take care of our mental health, of our minds and our hearts. Amen. We need to take care of our mental health so that we, we will not be overwhelmed by this um, crisis that is going on with the world right now. And um, with that, many people um, would like to, to know how to, how to be healthy mentally. And um, it's such a big word right now, mental health. But here in the Bible, actually, we can, we can see instructions as the word of god said amen that all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness so we have the word of god amen and i believe the word of god and the spirit of god the presence of the lord is more powerful than any psychotherapy or whatever um, things that the, that the world would, would advise for um, keeping our mental health. I believe that the word of God is still more powerful and the presence of the Lord is still more, more powerful for us to keep our mental health. Amen. And here in Philippians, as we have read in our key verses, Paul have mentioned some of the things that we need to do for us to keep our mental health just a few just a just a little background here here on the book of philippians uh, we need to understand that paul wrote this letter while he was in prison in rome amen so paul was imprisoned in rome and um that was about ad 62 and when Paul was imprisoned in Rome, um, he was more of house pres uh, he, he was more, more on house arrest by that time. We can read that in the in the last few verses of the book of Acts that Paul rented his own house and he was um, imprisoned there in his own house. But he was but but he can receive visitors, but there are guards who were guarding the apostle Paul in rome so he was imprisoned in rome and because of that because of that situation um paul needs to take care of his own expenses so the the government would not take care of paul's expenses and when the when the church of when the philippian church learned knew that the apostle paul was imprisoned they have sent Epaphroditus, one of the saints, one of the leaders in the Philippian church. They sent Epaphroditus to give, uh, to send the Apostle Paul support. So they sent financial support, love gift, an offering, if you may, to the Apostle Paul when they learned that he was imprisoned in Rome. So they sent Epaphroditus um, with uh, financial support. And Paul wrote them, wrote to them upon receiving this financial support and, and, as, and, and to thank them, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Philippian church. But um, he was not able to send the letter right away because Epaphroditus um was sick epaphroditus while he was in rome he got sick 
we can read that in chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. So Epaphroditus, their messenger, got sick. So Paul was not able to send, send to them the letter right away. So it, it took some time before Paul was able to send to them the, this letter to the Philippians. And um, we can imagine that was how they, they, do, they do it during those times. Not unlike today, right? We have email, we have Facebook, we have Messenger, we have many um, methods on how to connect with people from different places. And I'm, I'm even teaching right now from the Philippines. Uh, thank God for the technology. But during those times, during the times of the Apostle Paul, they don't have these technologies. So they, they communicate through letters and um, sending support would need a messenger. So the Philippians sent support through Epaphroditus and Paul wrote them a letter. So among the, the epistles, among the letters here in the New Testament, while the other letters like the Galatia, the Paul's letter to the Galatians, to the Ephesians, those were written because of the need. Paul wrote to them because, because Paul learned that there's, there's some emergency in the church. Like in the book, uh, in his letter to Galatians, he learned that the Galatians were, were being um, enticed by false teachers so he wrote to them but here in his letter to the philippians this this is more of um, a thank you letter to the philippians although he also addressed some some issues in the church because one issue one one of the issues of the church in in philippi was unity that's why we can read some portions of this letter paul was discussing about being uh being being uh having the same mind being united he even uh, he even mentioned two leaders in the church in chapter 4 and he said that you guys be be of the same mind you guys be united in, in chapter 4 verse 2 he mentioned there Eudias and Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the lord so although paul addressed some uh, some of the issues the issues in the church but this letter is more of a thank you letter to the Philipp to the Philippians, and um, he was in prison during this time, so not not very ideal situation. And um, actually, imprisonment is one of the one of the punishment that one of the punishments that men had done for somebody who had done wrong, right? Because being imprisoned is such a punishment. Because we are social, we are social being. We would like to connect. And when you are being imprisoned, that is being taken from you. So it's it's a hard condition that Paul was in when he wrote the letter. But we can read the book of Philippians that. He said many times about rejoicing, just like we have read here in chapter 4. He told the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord. To, again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. So we can see that although, although Paul was in that condition, that he was in prison, he, he even encouraged the, the church, the Philippians, to Despite of the situation, despite of the condition, despite of whatever is going on, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. So Paul wrote this to them, even, even though he was in, uh, in prison. And here in, in, uh, in our key verses, uh, Paul gives give, uh, the Philippians, and by application, all of us, Paul has given us these things that we need to do to keep our minds and our hearts in Christ Jesus. Keeping our hearts and our minds, that means mental health. How, do, how, how, how can we keep our hearts and our minds? Because that is where the battle is. Brethren, 
if we lose our battle in the hearts and our in our hearts and our minds then even our body can can uh will will also lose the battle because if our hearts and our minds our our mental health if our hearts and our minds have been um have been weakened our body can also grow weak that is that is the truth so we need especially during this time we need to take care of our body our physically uh, our physical body we need to be fit we need to take care of our body but we also need to take care of our hearts and our mind our mental health is very important as well and here Paul has given some things, one, two, three, four, I think five, five things that we need to do to keep our hearts and our minds, to keep our mental health, to keep, to keep us mentally fit, amen, so that we will not be overwhelmed, we will not be stressed, we will not be anxious, we will not be depressed because of what's going on right now. So here, let us um, let us go to these five things that Paul mentioned for us to keep our hearts and our minds, to keep our mental health. Number one is verse four. Verse four. I mean, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. That's the first thing that Paul said that we need to do to rejoice in the Lord. After this word, rejoice. Amen. It is in the imperative mode. It means it is a command. And that is also how we would find the word rejoice many times in the Bible. It's not actually something that Paul suggests. It's actually a command. Rejoicing in the Lord always is a command. So it it it, it does not depend amen on our situation it does not depend on on where we are on on the place where we are at on the situation where where we find ourselves in because rejoicing in the lord always is a command amen we are commanded to rejoice in the lord always so we we must overcome our our feeling well pastor paul i don't feel like rejoicing today well, that is our feeling, but the word of God, the Lord commands us to rejoice anyway. Because rejoicing in the Lord, because no matter what the situation is, maybe maybe you are sick, but still the Lord is our healer, so rejoice in the Lord. No matter what the situation is, we still have the Lord. Maybe you have a need right now but he is jehovah jireh so rejoice in the lord whatever the situation is we still have the lord with us and the lord told us that he will not forsake us he will not leave us he will not uh, he will always take care of us he is our shepherd so no matter that no, no matter the situation is we still have the lord so rejoice in the lord so we were commanded to rejoice in the lord you're feeling down you're feeling discouraged you're you're feeling bad but we still have the lord so we are commanded rejoice in the lord and when do we rejoice in the lord we do it always in all situation in all situation be reminded that we have the lord with us so rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice this is coming this was coming from from somebody who who was in prison but still he said rejoice in the lord amen because the joy of the lord is our strength the joy that is coming from god it is something that is internal it, it, it it's not happiness joy and happiness is not the same happiness usually comes from external things Maybe you're happy because you have you have a new cell phone. 
you have a new car, you have a new house. Maybe you're happy because you're you're with your friend. So happiness is something external, but joy is is something from within. It it does not depend on the situation. It does not depend on on external things. Joy is something that 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 we have in our heart. That's the fruit of the spirit. That is the fruit of the spirit. So um, it does not depend on the situation, and since we are commanded by the word of God to rejoice in the Lord, so we do it. We 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 need to overpower our feelings because the word of God, obedience to the word of God, is still it it must be on a higher level than our feelings. We must not be overwhelmed, and um, we not we must not be controlled by our by our feelings. Um, yes, we. we we need to express our emotion, but we need uh, we must we must be care we must be careful that our emotions would not control us. So number one, rejoice in the Lord always. Still, be be joyful in the Lord. Come to His presence with singing, Amen. And rejoice in the Lord. Always. That's the first thing that we need to do. Number two, verse five. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Number two is moderation in all things. Moderation means being temperate, having, having self-control, having self-discipline. And moderation is good for our mental health. We need to be moderate in all things because excessive desire and excessive uh, excessive. Sometimes when we desire something excessively, it, it, it leads to obsession, addiction, and it's not good for, for us mentally. Whatever that is, it may not be a sin, it may not be something that is inherently bad, but whatever that is, we need to be moderate in all things. Moderation, we need to control. We need to have temper. We need to have we need to have self discipline. So what whatever thing that is um, excessive, it will cause us harm more than benefit. So moderation in all things. Maybe we can uh, we can say that this would include social media, right, and um, internet. Moderation in all things. When we learn how to how to moderate, how to discipline ourselves, it will be beneficial for us. Amen. So it will not be leading to to overthinking. You know, when 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 we are obsessed about something, we tend to overthink. We we tend to we tend to be anxious about it, and it's not it's not very good for us mentally speaking and we will be overwhelmed by all these thoughts about about that thing and we become obsessed and we we will not be able to do what 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 we need to do because of um, overthinking and being overly anxious about something so let your moderation be known unto all men we need to have moderation in all things what Paul means here is that we need to be moderate, we need to be self-disciplined, and it needs to be consistent that people would 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 know this. He doesn't mean that we need to do it for the sake of the people, for, for the people to see it, but it needs to be consistent that people would uh, would help would, would not help but to notice it. Because you are consistent. You are known to be someone who is moderate in all things. Amen. So anything excessive, it's not good. So Paul here was saying, be moderate in all things. So that's number two. So number one is rejoice in the Lord always. Number two, moderation in all things. Number three, be careful for nothing. Verse six. Careful here. Amen. This is this is let us remember that King James uses 
Old English. So careful here means anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. Be anxious for nothing. That, that's what the verse means. Do not be anxious over anything. So Paul here did not say that we must not take care of, of, of the situation. If there is a problem, if there's a situation, we need to take care of it. We need to face the problem. We need to take care of the issue. We need to face the challenges. But what Paul was saying here is do not be anxious about it. Do not, do not worry that much about it. Even the Lord said that in Matthew chapter 6. Let us read in Matthew chapter 6. This is a part of, of the Lord's um, Sermon on the Mount. He said here in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of, for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? So the Lord here was saying that uh, when he said, take no thought, it means do not worry. Too much. Do not overthink. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about what you shall eat, what you shall drink, for your body, what you shall put on. So it, it, the Lord is not saying that we, we, we will not take care of it. Because we need to take care of these things, right? We need to, we need to go to our jobs and... Um, Make sure that there's food on the table. But what the Lord is saying here is that do not worry too much about it. Do not be anxious about it. He said in verse 26, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither they do weep, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? So the Lord was saying that he, uh, I mean, the Father in heaven feed these these uh, foes of the air, the birds of the field, even though they are not reaping, they are not sowing, they, they do not have job. How much more our Heavenly Father feed us? And we, have, we are more than these birds, right? We have skills. We have the Lord has given us job. We have God. Amen. We, we can call unto him. And we are way more skilled than these foes of the air. So why worry too much? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his stature? Has anybody grew taller because of worrying? Amen. That's what the Lord is saying here. Amen. And in the next verses, he he even mentioned about the the uh, the lilies of the field. So God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more are you, O ye of little faith? That's why he said in verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether with us shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that, these, that ye have need of all these things. Amen. That's why he said in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, that's what Paul was saying here in, in verse 6. Do not be anxious. Do not worry too much. Worrying is not helping us. Amen. If we think about it more and more and more, it is not helping us. Amen. So that's the third thing that we need to do. Do not worry too much about anything. It may be about your health. It may be about your family. It, will, it may be about your financial need, the crisis that's, that we have right now. About nothing. It, it, it's, it says here, do not be anxious 
about anything. Whatever that is, do not worry too much about it. But what we need to do, what do we need to do? That's the fourth thing that Paul mentioned here. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, pray. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Instead of worrying, pray. Amen. Whatever that is that makes you worried, pray. Everything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The world says, the, this world says, in everything by money, in everything by, by, uh, by influence, in everything by money. That's what that's what the word says. But for us Christians, in everything by prayer and supplication, and do it with thanksgiving. Amen. Let your request be made known to God. So instead of worrying, you pray. Instead of us thinking all night about that. Why don't we just pray and let it be known to God? Although he already knows what we need and what, what situation we are, we, we, we have. Um, let it be known unto God. He, God would like to hear it from us. You see, we, we, we go to God and we make our request be made known to him. It's not because he doesn't know. It's not for his information. It is for us. It is for our faith. It is for our mental health so that we will not be anxious. We will not be stressed. We will not be depressed over anything. So that's the third and the fourth thing that we need to do. So again, number one, to keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, to keep your mental health, rejoice in the Lord always. Then moderation in all things. Then do not be anxious about anything, but Pray everything by prayer and supplication. Then, according to verse 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you pray, sometimes the answer is not given immediately. Sometimes the answer to our prayers are not given by God right away. But you know what? You know what you receive immediately when we when we pray after we pray maybe the answer is not there yet but what you receive immediately after you pray is the peace of god and the peace of god which passes all understanding that's what we have that's what we receive immediately after we pray after we pray with thanksgiving after we pray in faith what you have is the peace of god maybe the, the Maybe the problem was not solved yet. Maybe the, the answer is not there yet. But you have the peace of God. It passes all understanding. You don't know why. You don't know why you have this peace. Why you have this, um, this, this peace in your heart. There, there's, there's crisis all around. There is the threat of this pandemic in all aspects of our lives, but you have peace, you have peace of God. It passes all understanding. It shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is what we need to keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, to, to be mentally fit, to keep our mental health, to overcome depression, stress, anxiety. Amen. This is more powerful, I believe, than any psychotherapy amen that we could have what we need is the peace of god which passes all understanding brethren that's what we need maybe you are anxious maybe we are depressed stressed about anything let me tell you what you need is the peace of god which passes all understanding amen that is how we keep our hearts and minds through christ jesus and now you have the peace of God. We must take care that 
we will not be letting our minds be polluted again with negative thoughts and uh, anything that would that would uh, take away the peace of God. That's why in the next verse, Paul said in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Because you have now the peace of God. Do not let your uh, your mind be polluted again with these um, negative thoughts and with all these evil reports. Amen. So Paul mentioned here that brethren, since you have now the peace of God, you have prayed, you have rejoiced, you have moderated in all things. You you are you have now the peace of God, brethren. Finally, let your mind be filled with good thoughts whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest just lovely pure of good report if there be any virtue those are the things that we must think about do not let it be polluted again with thoughts from the world thoughts from the devil but let it be filled with the thoughts that are true, pure, lovely. This is a part of keeping our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, keeping our mental health. Do not let it be polluted with the things coming from the word. Amen. Because you have now the peace of God. So that's what we need to do. Again, number one, rejoice in the Lord moderation in all things do not be anxious over anything do not worry too much everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving then you have the peace of god after that keep your mind clean do not pollute it fill it with with the word of god fill it with godly thoughts amen listen only to godly music do not let um, worldly music pollute your mind do not do not let um evil thoughts and evil evil uh evil things come into your mind be careful what you watch be careful what you listen to because that is how things enter to our mind whatever we watch whatever we listen to so in verse 9 lastly those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace shall be with you so paul was saying here that those things these things that you have learned you have received you heard and you have seen in me so paul was saying you have seen me doing this i do this so you do it as well you practice it you 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 make you do these things you rejoice in the lord have moderation in all things do not be anxious over anything pray then fill your your minds with with pure and good thoughts if you do that the peace of the god of peace shall be with you amen because he is our prince of peace so with that in mind brethren we need to do these things amen if you are anxious if you have if you are stressed over anything and if you are worried about your mental health this is what we need to do this is what we need to do to keep our minds and our hearts in christ jesus because that is where the battlefield is our hearts and our minds that's why the book of the, the book of Proverbs said that keep your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. And our mind, we must not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. So please 
take note of these things that we have learned and let us do it, let us practice it. And our hearts and our minds will be kept through Christ Jesus. Amen. So I hope that we have learned something tonight and I hope that these things that we have learned is uh, will be um, we will be doing it amen especially during these times we need to do this amen so we will pray as we end brethren hallelujah thank you jesus lord thank you for your word it was written two thousand years ago but it is helping us even right now we pray that we will be able to do these things because we need to keep our hearts and, and our minds in you, through you. We need to look at you, Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to keep our hearts and minds in you. So, Lord, we pray whatever situation any one of us is going on right now, we have right now. Lord, we pray that you help us, you guide us, Lord. Not just our bodies, to be physically fit against this virus but we need our hearts and our minds be kept to be to be healthy our hearts and our minds need to be healthy for us to not be overwhelmed by these things so i pray in the name of jesus lord we pray i pray that you guide us you help us thank you lord for your word Thank you, Lord, and we pray for your guidance, your blessing be upon Richmond Hill Apostolic Church, led by Pastor Jerome. And to everyone who's listening tonight, I pray that your guidance and, Lord, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, I pray that it will be upon us so that our hearts and our minds will not be overwhelmed. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. This is our prayer as we end. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, brethren. Thank you for listening tonight and have a wonderful evening in the name of the Lord. God bless you.